When I look back at Comet I Sun's time in my sky, whatever it does, however bright it gets or doesn't get, I look back at this morning as one of the highlights. This morning was very special, very special indeed. This morning members of my astronomical society, that's the Eddington Astronomical Society of Kindle, gathered at Kendall Castle to hold an impromptu comet watch, for a film crew from the Discovery Channel, who had come to do some filming for a specialist and documentary program they're broadcasting in early December. What's so special about that? Well, this all happened at 3 a.m., four hours before dawn. In temperatures of minus 4 degrees C. Celsius at the castle, which at the moment lies at the end of a very muddy, very icy, very treacherous path. And despite the biting cold, ungodly hour and general you have got to be joking. Nature of the whole thing, more than 20 East members gathered at the castle for the film crew, that's just fantastic. After putting the word out about the event I had hoped for maybe half a dozen die-hard members, but as we reached the castle there was a crowd of people there waiting for us. The film crew were delighted, because it meant a lot more potential material, interviews, shots of telescopes etc., for them to shoot and use in the prog, but rewind a little. It all began at 2 a.m. when the film crew arrived at my flat, after traveling down from Carlisle. An hour later, after filming Stella and I wrapping up and preparing to go out as an observing, we headed out into the freezing early morning, the sky was littered with stars, absolutely perfect, and after making our way up the road to the castle, picking up several Lee's members along the way, we headed up to the castle itself where, as I said earlier, a crowd was already waiting for us. Between 3.30 and 6 a.m., with the film crew wandering around and the us, interviewing people, filming people, etc. We observed and photographed Cometison, and Lovejoy too, although it was difficult, the sky above us was crystal clear and strewn with stars, but Essen wasn't above us, it was very low in the east, shining feebly from behind and fighting its way up past low mist, and straining to be seen against a slowly but relentlessly brightening eastern sky, I managed to get some pictures of Essen. Just, and other members did too. I'm particularly looking forward to seeing the images Society Treasurer Simon White took with his driven camera. By 6 a.m. the sky was just too bright to see Comet I Sun, so we all packed up and headed home. By 6 a.m. the sky was just too bright to see Comet I Sun, so we all packed up and headed home. Comet I Sun's position indicated by an arrow. It's still tiny really tiny, and still can only be seen with the help of a large pair of binoculars or a small telescope. But it's brightening, and developing some fine structure in its tail, so let's give it the benefit of the doubt. That's my best image of Ison from this morning, and my best image of Ison to date I think. That's a crop of an image created by stacking half a dozen frames together, the originals were all 6 seconds exposures with a 50mm lens in my Canon DSLR, set at f2.2 and exposed at 3200 ISO, while I sun was struggling to be seen in the low eastern sky, high in the southeast comet Lovejoy was putting on a show, the kind of show we had all been hoping I sun would be putting on by now. A close-up of Lovejoy. Look at that lovely comet. Big, bright, colorful. Looking at that image, again taken with just a tripod-mounted DSLR camera, no tracking, no following the comet across the sky. I can't help wanting to shout indignantly at the sky, I son. That's what you should be looking like now. Actually, even better than that. Get your act together. In fact, Comparisons between the two comets are grossly unfair. I sun is low in the sky, fighting dawn, fighting the haze and murk that lurk above the horizon, while Lovejoy is high in a dark sky, well above all the crud. I'm sure that if they swapped places, Lovejoy would be swamped by the dawn glow and I sun would be easily visible in binoculars, and its tail would be easier to see, too. But we are where we are. Images being taken by the pros show I Sun is developing very nicely. Here's the latest from comet photographer Michael Yeager. So, yes, 
a fantastic morning. I even managed to glimpse I sun in my large telescope for the first time. Which on any other morning would have been a very special moment, but there was so much special going on this morning it was rather swamped by everything else. Oh I sun dot what are you doing? You should be brighter than this by now. I've still got faith in you, I still think you're going to impress us, but seriously, you're going to have to buck your ideas up. 